So when did The Walking Dead stop being good? Many say it was after Glenn died, but the truth is the show stopped being good long before then. It happened when they changed the theme. Let me explain how. In the first season, the theme was obvious and clear, survival. Rick Grimes awoke from a coma without his family, and getting back to them was all that mattered. The odds seemed long that he would even find them, but he had a lead in the first episode and he couldn't stop until he got there to make sure. Then he found his family, and a new theme was to protect them no matter what. As he said in the season 1 finale, his job as a husband and father was to keep them alive, keep his family alive for as long as possible. He echoed this to Herschel in season 2 when the latter was contemplating an early death. In season 2, the theme became what should you do in order to keep your loved ones safe. Once Shane took a life to survive, he convinced himself that he was better than Rick for doing this, and was the better leader. Rick was convinced that losing her humanity for survival was not a cost worth paying, but this difference was also due to their polar opposite personalities. Rick was a charismatic leader who convinced people to obey him because he always had a plan to keep them alive. Shane was just a warrior with no imagination, and more often than not used his superior strength to bully people into submission. He was also a coward who would do anything to avoid danger until he's confronted with it head-on. Rick goes in face first without fear. And season two was about the group deciding which style of leadership was better. The interesting dynamic of Season 2 is that everyone preferred Rick's leadership, despite them whining non-stop about everything that he did. Once Rick killed Shane, he finally had had enough and told everyone to, to leave rather than question his decisions anymore. The last scene said it best. Half the group hated him for it, yet everyone was too scared to survive on their own, so they stayed. In Season 3... The main theme was how to keep people alive without losing their humanity, since death came from the living as much as the walking dead. Rick proved himself an even more capable leader once he stopped caring about what everyone thought of his decisions. He made everyone's life his own, person his own personal responsibility in exchange for absolute obedience. The even more amazing part is that because he was so good at it, the group gave him more respect than in season 2. Of course, that all came crashing down in the episode Arrow in the Doorpost. The only thing that would have made sense for Rick in that episode was to kill the governor on the spot. We know he could do it after the episode in Nebraska in season 2. Instead, he decided to consider the ridiculous ultimatum of selling out Michonne to the governor, who was already a, who was already a proven liar. After this episode, it was like Rick's brain just shut down and he couldn't think of any way to win the war, which made a, which made a great episode like Clear completely pointless. I mean, seriously, in Clear, they got a ton of guns fr from uh, Morgan in order to fight the war, and they're like, oh my gosh, now they actually stand a good chance. And then nothing came of it. I mean, yes, Maggie and Glenn did did have two assault rifles in the last episode. That was about it. Now I, now I understand why the show, showrunner Glenn Mazzara did this. It served three main purposes. Number one, to give Merle an honorable death. Number two, humble Rick for making such a horrible call that he decided to give up, give up his leadership for it. And number three, to bring the governor back in season four to destroy the prison, just like it happened in the comics. And time after time, it's proven in The Walking Dead that whenever you do anything uh, just like it was done in the comics, every everything usually goes to hell for it. Uh, the, I, there's nothing in season two or three that, re that remotely happens anywhere near what it was like in the comics, and the comics for season one don't even take place in in Georgia. They take place in Kentucky. Frank Darabont chose Georgia because of the CDC because he want because he he wanted it 
made clear that the apocalypse couldn't be explained. So, I mean, you could say that Glenn's death was from the comics. How many things were actually from the comics? I mean, seriously. Daryl and Merle weren't from the comics. Beth were, wasn't from the comics. I mean, there's, there's no reason to say that it has to be done because it was done in the comics. But all of the, but it, but everything, everything the arrow and the doorpost accomplished, it could have been done so much better. I mean, there were so many other ways. The things that do, arrow and doorpost accomplished could have been done so many other ways. Up until then, season three was actually making sense, and it was much better than season two. In fact, arrow on the doorpost is very similar to Nebraska in which Lori, for no good reason whatsoever, decides to get in her car and go find Rick, who is out finding Herschel, as if her going to the town would in any way speed things up. And worse, she left Carl in the hands of Andrea, who was proven to be the least responsible member of the group. Anyway, Rick's decision in this sorrowful life was so bad that I really couldn't take him seriously anymore. At this point, the baton of the show was passed to Maggie and Glenn, who were demonstrating the possibilities of real romance in a zombie apocalypse. That became the theme of Season 4. After Season 3, whatever vision Frank Darabont had had for the series when he first started it finally died. Glenn Mazzara had tried to carry it on as best he could, but AMC finally handed the reins of control fully over to Robert Kirkman, creator of the comics, who is a complete imbecile. As far as I can tell, his comics only succeeded in the first place by exploiting violence against women and featuring gratuitous, gratuitous sex. Anyway, in season four, Rick went bipolar, sometimes letting people bully him, sometimes going completely psycho on them. When facing the governor again, after just having ex exiled Carol and fending off a zombie invasion with his son, Rick reduced himself back to a total pansy, ending his character's relevance with what I consider one of the worst monologues in cinema history. Personally, I don't even think Andrew Lincoln himself believed in the speech. It was the worst acting he did up to that point in the series. Carl was, Carl was demoted to being a little kid again, after Rick had spent two seasons building him into a man quickly in order to survive. Carol's character was destroyed altogether. She ranted like a sociopathic serial, serial killer right up to the end of Indifference. I think this may have had to do with Kirkman's angst over not being allowed to kill her off like he had done in the comics. Apparently, I was supposed to care about the new main characters, but I didn't. Not before the prison fell, and certainly not after. Scott Gimple never gave me a reason to, and gave me every reason not to. Tyrese was a self-righteous asshole. Sasha was Andrea 2.0. And Bob was an alcoholic who was willing to kill Daryl over liquor. Abraham was just a dumber version of Shane, and Eugene was a used car salesman. Glenn could see right through his nonsense immediately. Seriously, how is anything classified in a zombie apocalypse? It still amazes me that the audience ever bought that line. I immediately read ahead in Wikipedia because I knew he was full of it. So when the prison fell, I focused only on Maggie and Glenn, Daryl and Beth, and Michonne. My interest in Michonne was short-lived, though, when her character was only used to protect Carl because his dad was now a wandering idiot. Rick got himself beaten half to death by the governor after having fended Shane off twice, who, would I, who I would bet on, on kicking the governor's ass any day. I mean, seriously. If you had to place real-life bets between the governor and Shane, you would pick Shane. And, and Rick, that Shane was actually afraid of Rick in combat. That was, that was made clear in 18 Miles Out. So how is it that the governor conquer, conquered Rick so easily?
Beth and Daryl were just wandering around trying to find a reason to keep living. In the episode Still, the writers tease us with the possibility of a hookup from the two being drunk together, and then the usual letdown that always happen that, that the usual letdown that always happens in TV. At least we got to see them burn a house down to cool music. Which was I mean, that was the highlight of the episode, especially when Especially when death point death gets Daryl to point the middle finger at the house, like you know, saying goodbye, saying goodbye to his bad childhood and bad parents. We were teased once again in Alone, where Daryl finally admits to having romantic feelings for Beth, albeit with his eyes instead of words. Then Kirkman pulls the absolute dick move of having Beth kidnapped before she can give an answer. Maggie and Glenn were the only good thing to happen before and after the governor in season four. After the prison fell, they were separated and both faced the implausible possibility of finding each other. Neither, what, neither was willing to give up as long as there was somewhere to look. It's one of the few times I've ever seen Hollywood take marriage vows seriously. They chose to live for each other unless death was confirmed. When they finally reunited, they made a promise to each other never to be separated again, that living for each other was the only thing that mattered. What more can you ask from a husband and wife in a zombie apocalypse? Seriously, that's why on my channel, the, the, the movie that I made for, for Maggie and Glenn, that's why I make the final, the final scene as, as Maggie burning up the picture, not because I wanted her to do it, not because I actually liked her doing that, but it was a promise that she made. It was a promise that she made with Glenn that there would that there would there would never be a need for him to remember her because they would they would never be uh, never be separate again. They would they would live together or die together. It was that simple. And when you consider that Beth was killed needlessly in season five before a reunion with Maggie could happen, and Glenn was killed just as needlessly in season seven, there's no reason not to end it with Maggie and Glenn surviving together in season four. And seriously, the ratings bear that out. The, the, that they, Kirkman thought it was such a great idea to kill off Glenn in season seven because it happened because he did it in the comics. But the truth is, the ratings have literally gone straight downhill ever since. It did. Up until that point, it really had become the Glenn and Maggie show. This whole idea of rebuilding civilization in the middle of a zombie apocalypse is stupid and pointless. It can't last forever, and it's foolish to entertain a notion. How to survive while keeping your humanity intact was the theme the show started with and should have ended with. AMC wanted Alexandria as a dumb excuse to keep the show going indefinitely, and for some reason it actually worked, despite the quality of writing just being flushed down the toilet season after season. And seriously, Kirkman was more than willing to do it because he had, he had, he had come up with Alexandria by the time that Frank Darabont found his comics, so I had to Kirkman... Alexandria was everything. It's like he was, it's like Kirkman was just steering the show inevitably towards Alexandria even though that even though how they even how they why they went to Alexandria in the show and how they got there uh, neither made any sense whatsoever. But that's where Kirkman wanted because that's where the comics were when the show started. It was that simple. The Walking Dead series plays the worst rule of soap opera. Give people a moment of an emotional high, and whether it makes sense or not, they'll keep coming back for more. Soap operas have proven that year after year. Okay, that's it. Thanks for listening.